Hi, I'm Stacy Malcolmson, President and CEO of The Senior Source, and I'd like to talk with you about your retirement years. You mean you haven't even thought about them? Not even a little? Okay, then close your eyes and what do you see? Perhaps spending time with grandkids, traveling the world. Maybe you see a golf course, or maybe you picture yourself finally getting through that stack of books next to your bed. For most of us, those golden years look pretty golden, and for many of us, they will be. But the truth is, as with every new phase of life, our golden years can bring challenges. I'm going to bet when you visualized your life after retirement, you didn't envision being frail or lonely, left in a care facility where the care is anything but caring, or getting scammed out of your life savings. Some of you may have imagined working through your senior years, but did anyone imagine being unable to find a job? We don't imagine these futures because we really can't see them. The reality of aging is that even though 10,000 people each day turn 65 in our country, as a group, they are pretty invisible. Homebound or placed in facilities and forgotten, nudged out of the workforce, ignored. At my organization, The Senior Source, we make the invisible visible by championing older adults. We empower them to live with purpose, we protect those who are vulnerable, and we advocate for and ensure the financial and emotional well being of 20,000 seniors in the Dallas area each year. Okay, so let me tell you a story. Let me tell you about Jane. When Jane came to the senior source, she was terrified. She had raised three children as a single mom. She had survived breast cancer. And you know what Jane told us was the single scariest thing she had ever done? Looking for a job as someone over the age of 60. Think about that. Looking for a job was scarier than breast cancer. Why? Employers tend to overlook older job seekers often because they simply can't see past their age to their capabilities. So we help folks like Jane stand out in today's job market. We build their confidence from career counseling to technology classes to LinkedIn training. We educate employers on the benefits of hiring older workers, and we are dispelling myths that lead to age discrimination. Our people go from invisible to hired. Let's talk about another invisible problem with seniors scam artist. One in nine older adults will become the victim of fraud. That's $36 billion a year these criminals take from older adults. Yet the vast majority of them won't report the crimes. Thankfully, Jim wasn't one of them. When a criminal defrauded Jim and his wife of every penny they had saved, our Elder Financial Safety Center stepped in. We helped Jim recover some of what he had lost, and more importantly, we're making sure Jim and his wife know how to never be victims again. But perhaps what's most invisible about our senior population is this, just how much they still have to give. They have wisdom, they have experience, they have love. Every day we are providing opportunities for these amazing older adults to make a difference in our community. Through the Senior Sources Foster Grandparent Program, we pair older adults with kids who have special needs in preschool settings, daycares, and medical facilities. Millie was one of those adults, and she volunteered in a daycare with a little girl who was homeless. One day, as the children were settling down for nap time, Millie gathered her things to leave. As she turned toward the, toward the door, she heard a small voice from behind her. Grandma, will you tuck me in? Millie turned around just in time to see the girl kicking off her blanket. And as Millie walked back to the girl's bed, blankets began flying off of every cot in the room. Other little voices called out, Grandma, tuck me in, tuck me in. Millie slowly worked her way around the room, tucking in every child one by one. Each child was seen, each child was loved, and so was Millie. Nobody in that room was invisible. Each day at the Senior Source, we see people like Jane, Jim, and Millie. Like them, each person's journey through aging is unique. The Senior Source ensures nobody has to take that journey alone. Whether they need an advocate in their nursing home, help caring for an aging loved one, or just a chance to show the world how much they still have to offer, the Senior Source is here. Today, we're here to talk about the journey of caregiving for a loved one. It truly can be an invisible journey. 
Have you felt that you can no longer just be a spouse because all you're doing is making sure your loved one can survive the day? Do you stay up at night worried that your mom can no longer live alone? Do you have more spreadsheets for medications and doctor's appointments than an accountant? These are just a sample of the calls we get every day from family caregivers just trying to keep their head above water. You're not alone and you're not invisible. But don't take it from me. Let's hear from the experts of our caregiver support program. Thank you. Caregivers are so important that the Senior Source has a program just focused on you and your special needs. Through our work with caregivers over the last year, we have assisted individuals providing care to older adults who range in age from 29 to age 96. They have been caring for persons age 49 to 104. Though caregivers are much more likely to be female and over the age of 50, this demographic is shifting a bit with a growing volume of male caregivers and younger caregivers. Each caregiver has a different support need, but all caregivers are extraordinary. Rosalind Carter and her foundation have worked to increase the visibility of caregivers and the significant role that they play in our homes, our communities, and in our country. You may already self-identify as a caregiver if you are living with someone and caring for them daily. But persons who assist older adults in other ways are also considered caregivers. Whether you help mom pay finances once a month and keep track of her checkbook, or whether you pick up groceries every single week for a neighbor, fill a pillbox for your dad every week. Each of you is a caregiver. The Caregiver Support Program at the Senior Source has multiple components that are designed to serve you, whether you are a working caregiver, a long distance caregiver, or someone providing care full time. The primary focuses that we provide in assistance are information and resources. So we do this both one-on-one, -on -one, um, over phone, over Zoom, in the office, but listening to your specific caregiving situation, ranging from where you live, who you care for, what their needs are, and your financial situation, and connecting you with resources that can benefit you. Sometimes we do this by focusing on supportive counseling when someone may be in crisis or feeling particularly burned out from their care and helping them transition back, meet those challenges and be successful and confident again in their role. To do so, we offer multiple support groups and a stress busters class that teaches stress reduction techniques, particularly for individuals who are caring for someone every day. It is most helpful to integrate stress reduction uh, techniques into your daily regimen. We are happy to offer care coordination meetings, and sometimes those are with other agencies, but often they are within our own facility. Many of the clients that I support are caregivers who can benefit from meeting with our financial safety center, and so we'll do dual meetings or joint meetings to save the caregiver time in which you can cover everything from your insurance questions to asset concerns to how you uh, access services all at once. And we do, um, in addition, lots of education programs and seminars just like this one, where we try to reach a general audience and again, provide information to help. So why the special focus? Well, one of the things that you may know from visiting with your doctor, if you're a caregiver, is that medical health providers consider some, often the caregiver to be their second patient. So they may be treating the older adult, but often they will ask about your health. That's because we know that caregivers are more likely to have physical ailments that impact them, but also to be at higher risk of suffering from depression and stress. And so we really want to boost the health of the caregiver because the well-being of the caregiver is a much uh, better situation for the long term. We do this through what we call caregiver essentials. So often I'll have a caregiver call and they'll say, oh, I'm just so overwhelmed and I don't know where to start. So we help you break it down into manageable steps of where you can begin. And so these five components, we're going to 
go over the first three just kind of quickly here, but we encourage you to learn as much as absolutely possible about your loved one, um, their medical conditions, all of their medications. What are their care providers? Who are they? What are their phone numbers? And also to inquire specifically about their prognosis because what you are seeing today in your loved one may alter, it might be very different in six months. Someone's prognosis may actually improve following therapy, or if they have a progressive um, neurocognitive disorder, we may anticipate that it will decline somewhat. And so you're planning for today, but also for tomorrow. The last piece we really stress is that you look at the person's functional status because specifically where they need um, assistance, whether that's with driving or whether that is with taking a bath, will help you determine who can be involved in supporting you and what level of care the person needs. We always say, please, please include your loved one in all of these discussions and decision making. Often we find that it's uh, we who are uncomfortable in talking about planning, but the older adult has been already thinking about this and has strong um, preferences that they will be willing to share if we ask. And believe me, doing this many times and hearing from many caregivers, it gets easier. The next area that we encourage is to build, um, to organize your network so that then you can build on that. And so we provide you a document that literally gives you a checklist. If you spend the time to pull all these items together, it will make it so much easier when you need to provide someone a durable power of attorney. When you need to apply for a veteran's benefit, everything will be together in one place. Next is to use what you have uh, organized to build on that to develop your network. The informal care network are you and me as family, friends, neighbors, members of a faith community. We are unpaid and we are providing assistance to an older adult without being paid. We uh, can make a huge difference in the division of labor for a caregiver. We can take some of the most stressful tasks from them if, in fact, um, the individual knows those folks to mobilize. The formal aging network is one of our roles here in terms of the senior source. It is our job in caregiver support to know about the myriad of resources in our community. The variation of even housing facilities, much less community providers and in-home providers, can be really confusing to individuals. So we keep track of this. We update our knowledge and our resources all the time, and then we are able to connect you with what we think is appropriate. But where do you start if you really need to do so today? Of course, you may call us, but you can also call 211. There's a lot of other organizations here on uh, your screen, but 211 is kind of the start for information and referral in our community, and we'll be able to connect you with everything else that I have listed. I want to point you to the very last line on the left side of your slide. Disease-specific organizations are playing a huge role in the lives of caregivers by providing them the knowledge to understand a disease. Individuals who work with someone who has a dementia, who are caring for someone with Alzheimer's, have benefited immensely by connecting with organizations where they learn to understand the disease, what to anticipate, and how to best provide care. But most folks say, but how do I pay for this? And so you'll see on the rest of your side, we will walk you through what we consider a checklist that will help you see what resources might be of assistance, including those services that may not uh, be offered at any fee and those that may be offered to individuals who have low income. Technology is playing a larger and larger role in caregiving. And here you and your loved one really have to make a joint decision about your comfort level. I presently have a caregiver in Colorado who installed cameras in her mom's home and she's looking in on her all the time, but that was with mom's consent. I have another caregiver who just purchased a special dementia phone for her husband in which the picture of 25 individuals can be programmed in and he can call them and they can call 
um, into him, but no other calls can be received. So she has reduced her uh, risk uh, of scams. Um, there are many systems related to medication management, organizing, um, systems for finances, etc. So if you have an interest, I encourage you to look at technology options. Lastly, we want to say um, self-care is where you really begin to address the challenges in caregiving, embrace the joy and find confidence. And so we again want to see that you practice self-care by going to your own doctor and getting your preventive health met metrics completed. So in addition, there are so many other things that you can do. Music, meditation, writing, exercise, hobbies, social activities that allow you to stay engaged with someone in addition to the person you are caring for. In Dallas, we are very fortunate to have a lot of extra focused activities that have been promoted and um, developed to support those persons who are caring for someone with Alzheimer's disease. You'll see several of them here on your screen. We have a wealth of information about these programs and we're happy to share them with you. Our program on caregiving finishes today by sharing the impact of respite care and caregiver support groups with you. I could tell you what I have seen from my professional perspective, but it is much more powerful for you to hear directly from those who have participated in these support programs. Thank you for being here today and for your commitment to being the best caregiver you can be by taking care of yourself too. We all know how important self-care is, but oftentimes caregivers don't know where to start. The Senior Source is here for you and ready to walk with you through your caregiving journey. Contact us today for helpful tools and resources. And remember that you are not alone. Thank you.